Once upon a time, the story of human evolution was an uncomplicated tale of one human species gradually evolving into a more advanced species, but we now know that human evolution was a tangled web of relationships with archaic humans, and that there never was a pure race of Homo sapiens that evolved only in Africa. Meanwhile, genetics and paleontology prove that Homo sapiens and other humans interacted over many hundreds of thousands of years, to produce the Frankenstein hybrid that we are today that eventually went on to colonize the entire planet in ancient manifest destiny. Depending on what anthropologist you speak to, some will say Homo sapiens actually began almost 800,000 years ago, when we split from Homo erectus and that Neanderthals and Denisovans were offshoots of Homo sapiens. It's just really a matter of how you draw the tree and label the branches, because right now we don't have DNA from ancient human fossils to tell us for sure. In fact, there may be at least five offshoots of Homo sapiens, one in Europe, one in East Asia, one in Africa, one in Southeast Asia that inhabited the drowned continent of the Sunderland, and then there are the Homo sapiens. The ancestors of Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans were wandering throughout the old world more than 600,000 years ago, when a crucial genetic mutation dramatically improved some of their brains. The hominins that predated modern humans had far more brain cells thanks to this mutation, according to research published in the journal, Science, giving them a cognitive advantage over their Neanderthal relatives. A portion of the brain called the neocortex, which is crucial in cognitive function, was the location where the researchers believed this protein would promote the proliferation of neural progenitor cells, which evolve into neurons, as the brain grows. They reasoned that this might be a factor in modern humans' cognitive advantage. The neocortex of contemporary humans is either denser or occupies a bigger area of the brain than that of Neanderthals, whose brains were estimated by fossil records to be around the same size as those of humans. The fact that such a minor genetic variation could have such a significant impact on neocortical development shocked scientists. Only one of the gene's amino acid building blocks separates the present human version of the gene, known as TKTL1, from the Neanderthal version. According to the study, this mutation is present in nearly all modern humans but absent in Neanderthals, Denisovans, extinct archaic humans, and other prehistoric humans. Researchers have discovered that humans produce more neurons in their frontal lobes than Neanderthals do because of a single amino acid, substitution in a protein. This little distinction may have given humans a cognitive advantage over Neanderthals. Even though modern humans and our prehistoric Neanderthal relatives are very similar, there are some significant distinctions between the two of us, most notably more densely packed frontal lobes. Humans are an odd, and potentially dangerous creature. We are not exceptionally genetically diverse for a global species, in part because our ancestors' wandering expeditions limited the gene pool of our ancestors through founder effects and bottleneck occurrences. Around the time early Neanderthal man initially appeared, or 600,000 years ago, the first species of recognizable modern humans began to evolve. Additionally, the appearance of modern humans is comparable to an unexpected alien invasion, or an asteroid impact that causes a global extinction on a geologic time period. In fact, something extremely rare, very powerful, and remarkable has been let loose on Earth. What specifically caused this mutation is the question. There doesn't seem to have been anything exactly like this previously in the 3 to 4 billion year history of life on Earth. The advent of the human datome is comparable to a sudden alien invasion or an asteroid strike that causes a mass extinction on a geologic time scale because it alters how energy flows and how the biosphere works. Due to an oddity in evolution, the mere fact that we are intelligent, talkative apes has resulted in the release of something else. This planet no longer only contains life made of flesh and blood. Paleoanthropology, the study of ancient humans, tells us that humanity's origins begin in East Africa. No scientific study disputes this claim. According to paleoanthropology, today's modern humans are not a direct Darwinian descendant of gorillas, orangutans, and or chimpanzees as many are led to believe. Rather, it teaches that we are direct descendants of an early human known as Homo erectus. Homo erectus is an extinct species of hominid that lived from the end of the Pliocene epoch to the later Pleistocene, with the earliest fossil evidence dating to around 1.9 million years ago and the most recent to approximately 100,000 years ago. The species originated in Africa and migrated as far as India, China, and Java. Homo erectus existed longer than any other human species. 
Homo erectus is one of the earliest relatives on our human family tree. Not fully like modern humans, Homo erectus was our direct ancestor. They stood around 6 feet 2 inches tall, and by contrast with modern humans had low foreheads and small brains. I'm excited to announce that we've partnered with Bone Clones, to give highly compelling subscribers a special discount. Use the code on screen to take $20 off any order of $100 or more for a limited time. Their fossil hominid line is composed of fossil discoveries from anatomically modern humans, archaic humans, early humans, primitive hominins and other fossils, including several Neanderthal skulls. Each fossil hominid is carefully researched and produced in high-quality recreations, and are great for any student or enthusiast of paleoanthropology. These humans to evolve from Homo erectus was the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens which lived between 600,000 and 400,000 years ago. The interesting thing about the last common ancestor is this, they didn't only bring forth the modern human race, but they are also the ancestors of another human, the mysterious human known as the Neanderthals. This is very interesting because of the mysteries and many questions that surround our brothers and sisters, the Neanderthals. The biggest questions may be why and how they became extinct some 40,000 years ago. We will find out the truth shortly, concerning all the mysteries surrounding the Neanderthals. Africa is where the journey begins for everyone living on Earth today. Through genetic markers in DNA as well as with other scientific methods, scientists are able to pinpoint when and where people lived thousands of years ago. We know from these scientific methods that our older brothers and sisters, the Neanderthals, appeared around 350,000 years ago after existing in a more primitive pre-Neanderthal state for around 250,000 years. We, the modern humans, came later than the Neanderthals. Our origins begin around 300,000 years ago, according to genetic markers. Concerning the birth of the modern human, the world of anthropology considers it as an excellent evolutionary leap. But this is not the case with the Neanderthals. One of the unsolved questions surrounding the Neanderthals is this. Why wasn't their leap as promising or gifted as the modern human leap? The science of anthropology, along with genetic testing tells us that 600,000 years ago the last common ancestor evolved into the Neanderthal. Then, some 250,000 years later, the last common ancestor evolved again, this time into modern humans. Some would say timing had something to do with the dramatic differences between the two groups that evolved from the last common ancestor. But if timing was a factor, one would still have to wonder why the two groups evolved on two separate occasions. In the mind of some, the leap into the Neanderthal is viewed by science as an evolutionary disaster. This flawed leap may have helped lead to their extinction some 40,000 years ago. Although this leap was an advance in some ways beyond their precursors, as these evolutionary leaps are supposed to demonstrate, the Neanderthals didn't seem to be built for the world ahead as the modern humans were. For example, Neanderthal legs were too short for running fast, a characteristic that should have genetically evolved well, as it did in the modern human leap. The Neanderthals ran much slower than their precursors. These characteristics are considered genetic defects in comparison with the modern human. In other words, the Neanderthal's evolutionary leap from the last common ancestor was not consistent with effective evolution. Neanderthals did not only live in Europe, but everywhere their Neanderthal fossils are found these same defects are present. Furthermore, the prehistoric modern man that anthropology calls Cro-Magnon lived in Europe, lived alongside Neanderthals, for approximately 5,000 years. Though the Neanderthal's brain was bigger than their precursors, i.e. around the same size as the modern human brain, we can learn from Neanderthals that size doesn't always matter. Their thinking ability, at least as far as toolmaking was concerned, wasn't very promising. Modern humans matched their toolmaking techniques in less than 100,000 years of existence, something which took the Neanderthals 250,000 years. Remarkably, modern humans advanced far beyond them in the last 100,000 years of coexistence. In contrast, Neanderthal toolmaking techniques for hunting and survival didn't advance until the last 2,000 to 3,000 years of their existence, when they coexisted in Western Europe with a certain sect of modern humans, known as Cro-Magnon Man. What could have stunted the Neanderthal's growth during 350,000 years of existence? What could have stunted their growth to the point where their intelligence and culture wouldn't evolve in a normal manner? 
beginning around 75,000 years ago, tools and weapons started taking new form and shape, becoming sharper and more durable. Creative expression starts to surface as well in the form of drawings on cave walls, jewelry, and sculptures that testify to an unprecedented level of culture and sophistication. It's as though a sudden spark ignited the modern human brain. But as far as the evidence shows, this spark did not occur in the brains of the Neanderthal. No one knows for sure the reason why their brains did not ignite like modern humans, but many theories have been put forth by the anthropology community. Some would say that the plan for the Neanderthal was a state of permanent ignorance. In the Neanderthals, the last common ancestor brought forth a race of humans suitable for cave dwelling and not much more. However, the answers to the mysteries surrounding the Neanderthals are obvious. Indeed, one of the original anthropologists to investigate the Neanderthal man came to the conclusion that, in the most ancient crania, the occipital was the most, and the frontal region the least developed, and that the increase in the elevation of the latter marked the transition from barbarous to civilized man.